Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we'll go ahead and get started with tonight's meeting. We'll start the invocation with Kevin Kolb, Grace Baptist Church, and then Terry Hollander will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Let's pray. Lord God, we're thankful for the opportunity to be here tonight. We thank you that we live in a, a county and a country that enables us to have uh, open discourse and dialogue concerning the laws of the, the, the place where we live. And we thank you for those who are serving on the council and the executive branch and the staff that supports them. And we pray your blessings on them. We pray you'd supply them with knowledge and wisdom, integrity. Lord, the prophet Micah says, we know what's required of us, do justly, love mercy, walk humbly before God. And Lord, we pray each one of us would consider our own lives and our own behavior and actions as we participate, even tonight. And we would consider that you have allowed us to be here and uh, we thank you again for this freedom. Give us wisdom, Father, and bless the events of this meeting that it might accomplish everything you intend. We do love you, and we pray for the citizens of our county, those that are hurting. Lord, I know of some today who have lost family members, and we pray you would comfort them. There are others today who are welcoming uh, new ones into their family. We rejoice with them. Again, we do love you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, roll call. Councilmember Joe Cronin. Here. Councilmember Mike Elam. Here. Councilmember Dave Hammond. Here. Councilmember Joe Brazel. Here. Councilmember Terry Hollander. Here. Councilmember Mike Klinghammer. Here. Councilmember John White. Here. Okay, now we'll move on to public comments. What we like to do with public comments is we allow uh, three speakers pro and three speakers con per subject, and we allow three minutes uh, per speaker. Uh, the, the girls have a, a, a beeper to go off, and that is the uh, elimination of your, your three minutes. Could I have the first speaker, please? On any topic, whatever you want to talk about. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, AC Dinoff, County Resident and Public Advocate. Um, the pastor had mentioned that we need to be responsible for our behavior and our actions. I've now been to the County Council, I believe this is the third time, requesting that the St. Charles County Community College Board of Trustees be responsible for their behavior and their actions. I'm asking the four members of the Board of Trustees be investigated, are in violation, and not in compliance of the law, Chapter 178 and Chapter 610 of the Missouri State Statutes, the Open Meeting Act, for public disclosure. This board includes the spouse of the county executive. There's a clear conflict of interest. The county executive has not, want, have, has not done anything to hire a special prosecutor, has not instructed the county counselor to do such, the county prosecutor also has a conflict of interest because his mother was appointed to the board without even asking her before the appointment occurred. There are definite violations of law and I'm still waiting for this county council to take some action. I'm waiting for the county executive that has a conflict of interest with his wife serving on the board of trustees to step up to the plate and let's investigate it. Let's not sweep it under the rug and keep it quiet. There are violations of the law and I expect you, the county council, to do the right thing and make sure that it gets properly investigated. On tonight's agenda, you have in the Parks and Recreation Department the uh, purchase of two deer utility vehicles. Um, I appreciate you buying inside the county from a St. Peter's vendor, but I'm questioning the $34,000 expenditure when the two gators uh, that they're gonna replace are 2008 models. One has 1,605 hours and the other one has 2,624 hours. Is it really a, a good expenditure of the taxpayer's dollars? The next item on the agenda is a Earth City um, company uh, to provide $25,000 for modification of the building fire protection system. I appreciate the negotiation of the staff to reduce the alter alternate, alternative bid from $16,500 to $4,800. But I'm still questioning why we can't find a vendor or somebody right here in our county keeping our taxpayer dollars right here at home. The next item, TriTech Systems. They're not located anywhere around here. Somebody erroneously left it off the sheet, but put all the other vendors where they were located. I looked up their information. It says San Diego, California. 
let's stop supporting California and let's start supporting Missourians and St. Charles County residents. Uh, the police department wants to buy a Nissan van, uh, $34,000 from Hazelwood, Missouri. What's wrong with the Ford model that was offered up for $30,800? Uh, another police truck, half ton, four by four, extended cab pickup truck. Is it true that this vehicle is for one employee only and it's gonna be driven for his use? I believe that other person has a current pickup truck that is uh, doing just fine for that person. It also has a special 36 gallon gas tank attached to it. Um, and the last thing I wanna touch upon is the housing affordable for renters. The $60,000 being given for a $125,000 bank loan to a, wild, a Wildwood company. But if you look into the fine tune, the two people that own the company are residents of Iowa. So let's, charity begins right here at home, not for Iowans to get rich off of our taxpayer dollars. Thank you. Okay, are there any other speakers for tonight's meeting? Dohag and I'm with Boone Slick Regional Planning Commission. I'm here to um, tell you about MORI. It's a transportation referral service. It is a Federal Transit Administration grant funded program. It's administered by MoDOT and then I have um, my 20% matches from Missouri Developmental Disabilities Council. What we do is people call me, they tell me where they're at, where they need to go, and I help them figure out the most affordable possible transportation in the region. I serve technically five counties, St. Charles, Franklin, Lincoln, Warren, and Montgomery, but we are working towards making this a statewide program, and anyone can call me from anywhere in the state. Our, mark, our goal is to serve people with, um, people with disabilities, senior citizens, low-income individuals, but we help anyone that calls. And I do want to thank St. Charles County for supporting this program. We are on your website. We also received a letter of support from your council, so we thank you very much for that. And for me, it's uh, great to be back in a place where I worked many, many years ago with uh, Captain Todd. So thank you very much for your support, and if anybody needs help trying to get transportation, if a constituent calls you, you are welcome to refer them to me, and I'm gonna leave my brochures with your clerks. Any thank questions? you, no, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. I'm only focusing on dispatch and alarm. I am an IT network engineer, been so for 16, 17 years. Uh, that price is absolutely ridiculous. There's no, I mean, you're talking about support. You're not talking about new equipment, right? You're not talking about maintaining the hardware. You're actually talking about support, second or third level. So that part there, I mean, I, you know, I, I don't see why your in-house folks can't do it. So that's all I got to say. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else want to talk about the uh, IT um, dispatch and alarm? Okay, any other topics? Anybody like to talk about anything else? Welcome, Mr. Goss. Thank Haven't you. seen you in a while. It, it has been a while. That's to my detriment. <laughs> Is that going to show if I do that, or do I need to do something special here? Good. All right. Members of the council, Mr. Chairman, my name is Brad Goss, and I'm here to speak tonight on behalf of the residents uh, who are, uh, have concerns uh, and opposition to Bill Number 4237, which is on your agenda uh, for tonight. Uh, it was recently considered at the Planning and Zoning uh, Commission meeting and was uh, approved on a very divided uh, vote. Uh, I will try and be brief uh, with my comments. Uh, I believe the council is familiar that uh, this proposed zoning uh, is to put a soccer field uh, in on Highway Z. In fact, a complex of soccer fields and a commercial building uh, as well as a uh, parking uh, lot and some uh, porta potties to serve the uh, sanitary facilities. The property is currently zoned uh, agricultural. Uh, and fronts on Highway Z. Uh, the Agricultural District, uh, as I'm sure this council is all aware, uh, emphasizes uh, rural uh, values, uh, agricultural, uh, recreational, wildlife, open space, farming, river-oriented uses, and related uses, 
uh, our water to be used in the agricultural district and we are to discourage the premature and disassociated urban development that might otherwise occur uh, but for the council uh, taking action. Now as conditional use there is allowed a recreational or commercial outdoor use and it's under that uh, use that the conditional use permit application has been submitted. However, when you look at the uh, provisions for approving a conditional use permit, and by the way, the applicant bears the burden uh, to show that these uh, conditional use permit uh, requirements have been satisfied, uh, there are five of them. Uh, and in essence, what we're trying to do is to ensure uh, that the surrounding neighborhood is preserved, uh, and that the values uh, of the neighborhood are preserved, the aesthetic values are not disturbed, uh, that we're not going to impede the normal uh, development of the property uh, in the area, and that area certainly is very rural. Uh, the county rezoned this area from three acre lots to five acre lots not all that long ago, and that development uh, in fact has continued along those lines of the five acre lot type development. Uh, and we want to make sure that the development uh, does not cause uh, any kind of health issues, safety issues, or other kinds of environmental issues. So when we look at that and look at the proposal, uh, what we see is that uh, the applicant is proposing a series of soccer fields uh, as well as a parking field that's going to be visible from Highway Z and from the surrounding uh, properties. Two of those fields are turf fields and the others are going to be uh, grass fields. Uh, the parking field itself, the parking lot, is going to be gravel. It's not going to be a hard surface parking lot. So when we look at the public health safety uh, and welfare issues uh, raised by this proposal, and that's the first prong that this applicant needs to be meeting. Uh, there are concerns with soil erosion and stormwater runoff. Mr. Uh, Goss, yes? you want, we'll know you're here. Can we, uh, if we have other questions when we get on the bill, can we get back to you? You absolutely may. Okay, thank Should you, I sir. stop at this point? Yes, sir. Well, I'm crushed. We, we, uh, the, <laughs> we have to follow the rules with everybody else. But, but you do have my presentation, and, and I think what when you go through the presentation, all I would say is that what I've tried to do is illustrate each of the criteria. When you look at them, look at the pictures, and look at the supporting evidence, there's some real concerns here, and we think we, we we'll need get, to We will get back else. with you on this. We'll have Carter with a conversation on this one. Thank you. Is there anybody in the who would like to speak in favor of the um, soccer field, the, um, what is this, um, whatever this is on the. Bill 4237. What is it? Bill 4237. 4237. 4237. Are the people here that's um, representing? How you doing? I'm Mike Wojcik. I'm uh, president of Missouri Thorns. Uh, we're the club that's uh, buying the property and putting the facilities on, the, on that property. Uh, first of all, I want to tell you a little bit about the Missouri Thorns. Um, we're a girls club, and we have the FC Missouri, which is the boys side of the club. Right now, it's a uh, majority of it's a girls club. There's 350 girls that are part of this club. Um, a couple of them here tonight um, to show their support. But uh, you know what we're doing here is we're we're a, a pro affiliate of the Portland Thorns. Alex Morgan um, obviously just won the U.S. World Cup. She's a Portland Thorn. Uh, these are these are you know, women that, you know, my girls, I've got three girls in the club as well, that can aspire to be one day. Um, and what we've done is we've taken the Portland Thorns, and now we're an affiliate team called the Missouri Thorns. We're providing a true pathway for these girls to play pro soccer right here in St. Charles County. I mean, this is something that's, uh, you know, it's, it's across the country. We're one of the few areas in the country that have uh, made a uh, pro affiliate team. Um, outside of their home city. So this is something that's great for this area. Um, it's for these girls as well. With that, we're going to help these girls get college educations with soccer. But the, tr the, the, the truth here is that we're providing a true pathway for them. If they want to play pro soccer, they can. If they want to get a college scholarship, they can. We're going to help them do that. All right here in our backyard. Um, the bottom line here, too, is that we're quite simply just building seven soccer fields, okay? This is not, you know, earth-shattering stuff here. We, two of these facilities are going to be um, synthetic turf. Uh, the synthetic, synthetic turf is green. It's, uh, we're going to do it with coconut husk. A lot, you've heard a lot of these things with the rubberized synthetic infill, or infill is uh, a carcinogen. Uh, we're doing it with coconut husk, so it's a green environment. The companies that are putting some of this, uh, uh, this, this, these turf fields in for us are, have done 20 to 25 in the area. They're very well, uh, they know everything about uh, storm rain, or rain uh, storm sewers, and, or I'm sorry, not sewers, rain uh, water, you know, um, coming off the fields, where it should go, where it shouldn't go, that kind of stuff. Um, uh, this is also enhancing St. Charles County. Um, it's bringing a lot to the Winsville, the Winsville area, O'Fallon area, Lake Snellis area, and that surrounding area. Um, 
Another thing I want to mention is the easement off of Highway Z is 120 feet. We're going to have about 300,000 square feet of parking that will be available, so there won't be a shortage of parking anywhere. We're using the, um, uh, the Central Electric right there on the, on the side of the property, to the right of the property. We'll be accessing up a Sprock Road, so there, no, there will be no one coming down Highway Z trying to turn right or left into the actual property. Uh, we'll, we'll be, the Sprock Road will be a, an additional road that will come, th come off of Highway Z, then it comes into our property. Um, like I said, this is for the kids, you know, the uh, 4 to 18 years old, some of them are here today. Um, we're trying to capture some of uh, some money for them for college or what they want to do and um, highlight their abilities. Uh, the lighting system, I know there's a lot of people are going to talk about the lighting system tonight too as well. I brought this right here, can't really see it that well, but the lighting system that everyone's going to talk about later basically only leads off at 197 feet from the fields. We're about 400 feet from Highway Z. So the lighting system is a Moscow light. It's got a shade on it. Um, it illuminates just the field. The lumens only go 197 feet. This is from the manufacturer of, it, of the lights. Um, I guess I have to finish mine later as well. Yeah, we'll, we'll get back. We'll, okay. we'll ask you questions okay. when we get into this Great. ordinance. Thanks. All right, thank you, sir. Is there anybody else who would like to speak in, against this proposal? Hi, my name is Amy Cartman, and I and my husband and I own property, a substantial amount of property, and have a, a very large investment in the area that we own. Three pieces of property, our private residence on 13 acres, another five-acre parcel, and a home on one acre, all right in the vicinity of the proposed facility. And I want to go through my concerns. I did send you all a letter with all this information and some photographs. Um, how do I make this work? <laughs> It'll, it'll okay, well, that's not showing up too well. But my concerns are, first of all, it will diminish our property value. In the planning and zoning meeting that we had a couple of weeks ago, four of the um, board members themselves said they believed it would diminish the property, it would lower the property values in the area. Um, we've already had one homeowner list their home for sale at a reduced price to try to get out before this is built. We have another homeowner that has stopped construction with Bill Cross Homes that was adjacent to the property because he's afraid he won't get his value back out of the house. So here's a few pictures of homes. That's our home at the top. We're with, we're at, that house is 350 feet approximately from this facility. Here's another home that's within 500 feet of the proposed facility. This home right here is right across the street and faces the 300 gravel parking spots that they're talking about. You know, and I'm really concerned. I'll get to the 300 gravel parking spots. Here, here's the front of that home that's across the street that out over this and here's another home you can't see very well sure that that uh, is within 500 feet of the property so that's my first con concern and, and the county did raise the lot size to five acres which has only increased the size and value of the homes that have to be built there to justify the cost of the land so it seems contrary to come back now and approve a conditional use permit like this after raising that uh, lot size to five acres here's where there here is the site where the entrance to the facility that, that uh, up on the top left, that's the entrance, that's Sprock Road where they're talking about having the entrance to the park. You can see this hill coming up. My family and I have responded to three accidents ourselves. One airlifted out. You can ask everybody along Z, we've all responded to accidents there because that's a really dangerous curve. They come up around there, they fly off that curve, and um, it's really bad. Here's, here's the other, coming the other direction on Highway Z. Again, you can't tell very good on this overhead, but when you see these pictures, you can see that there's a dip behind there, and the traffic coming the other way cannot see um, the traffic coming, heading south on Z. Another problem that, that uh, my family and I have, as well as a couple other residents across from this property, is drainage. Um, that property drains over to a culvert that's under Highway Z, and um, we have a lot of erosion problems. My, we have tried everything we know. We've brought big rock in. We've built a concrete uh, pad trying to control it. We've done vegetation, silt fences. We can't control the runoff now, and the, I don't know of any plans to build a retention pond or anything to make sure that they don't increase the runoff. Is that my time? Yeah, that is pretty much your time, yes. Thank you. Do I give this to? Over here. Over here. <coughs> is there anybody would like to speak in favor of the soccer fields? 
Good evening, Council. My name is Gregory Geiger. Um, I'm currently the Executive Director for Missouri Thorns. However, for the past 17 years, I've also been a real estate appraiser, um, certified in the state of Missouri. My license is, uh, expires June 30th, 2013. I'm also currently a real estate agent salesperson for Rose Property Partners, um, LLC. That is, that is from 2000 is when I received my license in there. And I actually have ran some information and some um, statistical information on other complexes in St. Charles and other complexes that have been built um, within the last several years. And um, I have some value value issues there as well. Um, I spoke with a Kansas City real estate agent in Overland Park. Two years ago, they put in his 12, uh, 12 synthetic fields with all lighting. Um, and, and they've actually sent me all their statistics with homes and properties surrounding this property, as well as backing to the, to the fields and the lights. And they actually had an increase last year of 10.6% going up from last year to this year. So there's actually um, information out there that says that, you know, that may may prove in our favor that necessarily values don't decline in that situation. Um, I'd also, I don't know if I can, but I'd like to present these to you guys um, as part of a packet, if we can. I don't know if, oh, I'm, yeah, allowed, if I'm allowed to do that. I also ran um, Tony Glavin soccer complex, um, and within a mile radius of there, um, last year, um, and there's a mile radius. There's, I don't know if anybody's familiar with Ohm's Farm. It's a newer subdivision. Be, um, Payne Homes is building homes in there. The values have actually increased in that area. Um, Median-wise, about 7.6%, and um, as, as uh, average-wise, about 10.3%. Um, within the Tony Glavin, one mile radius of that complex, which is also a soccer complex with lighted fields, um, I think they have six fields, maybe six to eight fields um, in a soccer complex right there. Um, also, Mid River Soccer Complex, which is located at 5850 Highway N. Um, I also ran statistics on that property, which is currently being taken over by St. Louis Scott Gallagher, and they're they're going to put a complex in there as well. Um, within the last year, I've ran those statistics as well. Last year, the median um, the median sales price was 229.9. The median sales Oops, wrong one. I'm sorry. Pending right now. I'm sorry. Uh, that's a mistake. The median sales price right now is 215. The pending sale price is 229.9, and last year's uh, medium sale price was 205, the pro and the average was 217.538, and this year's 228.330. So I think those are all soccer complexes within the area that have had, that have had you know recently built and and had homes being constructed, new construction as well as homes selling within those areas within a you know, within a given radius that, that, that provide pretty good information there. Um, I'd also like to talk about the Johnny on spots as far as our, we're concerned. Um, we will put up a fence for that purpose. Um, there will not be seen from the highway. We'll put up a privacy scent fence. They will be behind there. And I've also spoken with Chief Mossy. I'll have to, I guess I have to do mine later right. too. Thank you. <laughs> can I present this? Or yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. We can pass them. What's that? We can pass them. Okay, that's all. That. Sure. Thank you. Okay, we're on our last speaker. Do we have anybody else who would like to speak against the soccer fields? My name is Rob Jorgensen. I actually have the property right next to it, and I'm the one that is stopping building my home. I actually have my garage that's going up now because it's already underway, but my home I'm not going to build at this point until I see what happens. The one thing I want to say is we're not opposed to kids and soccer. And you hear a lot of soccer fields that are being improved and stepped up. So you kind of wonder, is this one really needed if more is being added? And there was a new one that was added in Wentzville, two soccer fields there, two, two turf fields that were added there. But the biggest thing that I want to look at is we need to make this area stay looking like it looks today. And how are we going to do that? We can't take and put uh, soccer fields in there like what's off of 370 gravel very low-end soccer field. The one that he talked about in Overland Park is very high-end soccer field, very nice. It's almost like a park-like setting. There's different walking trails, there's proper sanitation. Uh, the other thing is most of these soccer parks you go to are built in around industrial parks. There's usually an industrial park around it. Last time I looked, there wasn't an industrial park out there. It is, it is country living. You know, five-acre lots. People <coughs> invested their lives out there and their life savings. And that's where I'm at. I can't afford to invest my life savings and then not be able to get it back out if I have a very low-end soccer field next to me. And that's the biggest concern here. Everything so far, it's, it's low-end. And I understand stuff's very expensive and you can only afford to put so much in. 
But at this point, if, if you guys don't hold them accountable from the get-go, they won't do it. And you know that as well as I do, they won't do that. I can't have a soccer park off at 370. I've been working on my property, buying a lot of product to clean up my property. Bet you there's a lot of other people about, out there that won't build anymore and a lot of businesses that are gonna be impacted by not having sales going on there and there's people on this board know exactly what I'm talking about, or cancel. It, it just comes down to, we really need to look at it from value. We look at it from safety. There's some serious safety concerns there. If that soccer field went in, there needs to be some major changes to the road. There needs to be turning lanes put in. This isn't all just about our own financial needs here. It's about safety. At some point, really, the safety needs to be a priority here. Those fields and that park should not go in until that road is changed. Because if it's not changed, the accidents that have already happened are gonna increase. And you guys are gonna be the ones responsible for that if you pass it without it being changed. You need to go out there and see it. Those pictures he showed you to, didn't even give it justice for what it's like. Today I went out there and drove around a little bit and almost got rear-ended a couple times. There's certain directions you can go on that road and you're halfway safe and there's other directions you, you can't be. The influx of traffic at one point in time is gonna be so large Traffic's gonna be backed up. People are not gonna be able to see what's going on. I mean, it, it's, it, it's a bad situation. That's about all I can say. Thank you, sir. Uh, last speaker on, is there somebody who'd like to speak in favor of the soccer park? Okay, moving on to any other topics. Anybody else like to talk about anything else with the county? Okay, uh, that closes public comments. Moving on to the oral report. Steve, do you have anything? No, sir, I do not. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, consent agenda. Any items to be removed? Yes. Mr. Brazel, I would like to remove the um, police department van bid and also the community development uh, bid for housing affordable. Second. Second, okay. All, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Is there anything, other, any other items to be removed from the uh, consent agenda? Motion for approval of the remaining portion of the consent agenda. Second. 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 All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, Mr. Cronin. Um, this, the police van bid I, I took a little interest in because my district uh, uh, contains the GM plant, which is the home of the vans in the entire country for General Motors. And um, I wasn't real keen, as a lot of probably UAW workers are, where they are like our St. Charles County buying a um, a van from from uh, Nissan, but I did some, uh, and, and I'll do fairness to, um, to to Chief Todd and his fellow sent me a lot of information. I did some checking on it, and um, the the what they're needing is what they call a high roof uh, van, and there's not a whole lot of them. GM and Ford don't even make them. They stay actually, we could have got a GM and Ford had we had more time, but you buy basically a chassis in the cab and you send it out to an outfitter. Uh, even the particular van that, um, that Chief Todd is wanting, there's only one within 700 miles of here. Um, Chief Todd did a real good job securing a, um, a, a grant for this van. Um, MoDOT is paying for it with a public safety grant. Our old van uh, for this purpose is 20 years old, so my, my hats are, are tipped to him for getting uh, the grant to do it. But he has to have the van in-house and he has to get the equipment in by September 30th. And as much as I really hate to be voting for a, a Nissan van for all those workers for GM that build in vans in, in my district, I don't see any choice. Uh, the, the only option would be not getting a van, and I don't think that's an acceptable choice because um, that this van is to keep the roadways safe from drunk drivers, and I thank Chief Todd for his work on this. I did do some investigating, but I wanted to explain this to, to the folks in this county why we're buying a Nissan van and not a Chevy that's built in Wentzville. Um, and that's, unless, unless Chief Todd's got anything, I think that's pretty much the, the story what I found out. <clears throat> State bid, and that's how the Nissan come about. We, we tapped into the state bid. That was the approved vendor for the grant, and it was the Nissan. That's how the Nissan come in to be. And, and for some reason, the the, seven, the 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 van 700 miles away isn't available. The folks at GM said they'd work with you real hard to find one for you. <laughs> but other than that, I think we've got to go with what what he's proposed. Okay, but I just wanted to explain that because I'm sure a lot of people would are interested in it. Any other comments on the van? 
Okay, Joe. Okay, and then um, the on the housing of, uh, affordable for renters, um, when I read that agreement, um, a lot of alarm and flags went off, and I met with Robert Myers and Joanne earlier, and um, with their uh, permission or blessing, I'd, I'd like to get that tabled because I think um, I think this um, this uh, disabled veteran is in need of our help, but I think there's some stuff that can be done with a legal agreement to ensure that he gets the help that we're trying to provide him. So if it's uh, with you folks' uh, agreement, I would like to, in Joanne's agreement, I would like to get this tabled and to, to work on this a little bit more, okay? Okay, so you have a motion to approve the van and then- the van, motion to approve the van with an explanation and a motion to table the community development uh, affordable housing affordable for renters program. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, that that uh, is on hold and the van has been approved. Joe, if I can jump in real quick. Yes, Mike. I uh, wanted to say welcome to our new uh, workforce development uh, director. Um, I've worked with Scott in the past on on other economic development projects and uh, it's a real coup for, for St. Charles County to be able to, to secure his talents on a, on a, more, a permanent basis here. Um, I'm really looking forward to it. I think uh, Steve had a nice article in the paper the other day talking about how we can use um, our workforce as a uh, economic development tool and, and Scott has the, the uh, 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 capabilities and the, and the knowledge to help bring more jobs and more businesses to St. Charles and obviously workforce is a, is a major component of why companies come here. So I wanted to, to officially welcome Scott on, on board. We kind of we kind of passed over him real quick on a, on a motion there. So, Scott, looking forward to working with you. Do you want to say anything, Scott? Are you? you know? <laughs> okay. I, I, yeah, okay. I, I also had the opportunity to work with Scott uh, many years ago at St. Peter's, and uh, he did an extremely great job then, great people person, and uh, he be a real asset, I think, at the workforce. Okay, thank you. Welcome aboard. That concludes uh, the, the, that the comments for the table bills and so forth. Moving on to uh, bills for final passage. Bill number 4235, an ordinance authorizing the county executive to execute an agreement with municipalities for inspections and assessments of damage caused by flooding or other disasters. Any questions or comments? Seeing none. An ordinance authorizing the county executive to execute an agreement with municipalities for inspections and assessments of damage caused by flooding or other disasters. Councilmember Cronin? Yes. Councilmember Elam? Yes. Councilmember Hammond? Yes. Councilmember Brazel? Yes. Councilmember Hollander? Yes. Councilmember Klinghammer? Yes. Councilmember White? Yes. Bill 4235 is passed. Moving on to bills for introduction. Bill number 4236. Bill number 4236 requested by Wayne Anthony, sponsored by Joe Brazel. An ordinance granting conditional use permit CUP 15000003 for a nursery and lawn care service to Robert Chatro. Any questions or comments on Bill 4236? Is Rob, Rob, are you here? Is he not here? Okay. Any guys, any guys questions? No. This nursery was, um, Robert, this, isn't this a nursery that's been there forever, hasn't it? Okay. Okay. Okay, all right, Any, moving on to Bill 4237. Bill number 4237 requested by Wayne Anthony, sponsored by Joe Brazel, an ordinance granting conditional use permit CUP 15000004 for athletic fields to Mike Wojcik. Any questions or comments on Bill 4237? I guess I'll start. Um, <clears throat> uh, Brad, you wanna come up here for a minute? I guess um, I had a call from one person. I called him back, but they, we never hooked up on the phone. Um, but I guess I'm, I'm kind of a little confused about this. I mean, I understand why people don't, I, I, I get the country thing. Believe me, I live out past you guys in Augusta. I've been out there a long time and I get it. I, I, I get the lights, I get all that. But I'm just trying to figure out what, you know, this property has been for sale for an awful long time, over three years, I think. And um, it's gonna get sold and something's gonna, come to use of it and and what that's going to be i'm not sure but if you wait too long who knows if winsville is going to come out that way or whatnot you're going to have eight homes per acre um but it's it's you know we have parks in the county we do parks we have one not so far from there um and 
I'm not so sure how this is any different than a park. You know, we got the community club up in New Melly. Um, and I think if, I think if, if things are, and I, I don't have an opinion on this one way or the other, but I'm just trying to think through this whole process because um, you're gonna have open fields, grass, and, and some two fields that are AstroTurf. Um, it's, it's a positive thing for kids. Uh, it's a sporting event. Um, I get some of the other things. I think if, if we're concerned about like berms or we're concerned about light, sh light shades and, and things like that, highway issues, like they'd have to get that all approved by MoDOT anyway. We, would, we don't tell them to put lanes in and all that. Isn't that right, Joanne? No, doesn't that have to go through MoDOT? That's coming off of Z. They the would, if, <clears throat> so they would have to approve any kind of access points, um, I, would, I would assume. So I, I'm just trying to weed through this to see exactly besides the, um, I know moving out to the country and having, but, but the use for this property, I don't, I don't know what else, you know, if we set some, 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 some guidelines or some, some conditions, just wondering if we can meet halfway on it because I'm not so sure this is a, I think this is a good opportunity for St. Charles County to have a soccer league like this come into our community. I think it's a huge opportunity. I, and I we're almost should be thankful that they're wanting to come here. Sign me up. Uh, I, uh, I, I think the, uh, I think the comments that were made were pretty clear. Nobody doesn't like soccer. Nobody doesn't like, you know, girls soccer. Nobody doesn't like the idea of bringing some kind of affiliation of professional team to St. Charles. Those are all positive things. And I'm sure Mr. Wojciak, you know, sounds like he has some kids in the program and, you know, those are positive things. Nobody's arguing about that. The problems associated with soccer in this location, however, there are some real problems. Uh, I think if you put this in St. Paul uh, and you look there and go, wait a minute, you know, we got kind of a rural way of life here. Uh, and and, and you'd, have, <laughs> you'd, have, you'd have some concerns. I mean, if you, you look at, I know how much you value the rural part of the county. Um, you know, Councilman Brazel, you've been an advocate for that. You and I have gone around and around some different developments that I've tried to get approved and you said, well, that's too much. Um, and you, you've shown real integrity with that. What the county has done with this tract is they, they've zoned it, they changed the zoning from three acre lots to five acre lots. That makes it even harder to put in homes around there uh, that you can capture the value of those homes. You've got people who've put in homes over half a million dollars, $900,000 next to this facility, uh, where it's gonna go. And you know, what, what will happen if this facility goes in, one of the, there's not been a lot of careful, what I'd call, sitting down over a table, working through the issues and really talking through, how's this gonna work? You got 300 parking spaces that are being set aside. I thought I heard somebody, I thought I heard the, Mr. Wojciech say 300,000 square feet was set aside for parking. Maybe I misheard that, maybe what he said was 300 spaces, but that's a lot of area for parking. That's a lot of cars coming and going. This use is gonna go till 10 o'clock at night. That's a lot of late night use. And people don't leave immediately when the game's over. They talk, they, you know, shoot the fat, talk about the game, talk about the practice. Those are all things people do. It's a normal part of, of, of what you do with that activity. Does that activity belong in one, of the, in one of the most rural parts of the county? I think there's some real room for debate on that based on what your standards are in your ordinance. The comment was made by the XO that, well, don't worry about the porta potties, we're gonna fence them in. Well, I don't know, it made me think back to when I was a kid and maybe didn't have my law license, you know, you fence something in, uh, you could have a real problem with vandalism. I'm not sure that's the solution or the answer either, but that made me think, okay, how are you gonna handle security? What are you gonna do so that you don't end up with 300 porta potties getting tipped over? Uh, some night. I don't know how that works, but that question needs to be addressed and answered. Um, you're looking at erosion problems. What your ordinance calls for is that your parking field is supposed to be something that doesn't generate dust, that doesn't generate runoff. We haven't seen any kind of proposal that shows how they're going to address that. And the time to address that is now, because these are the conditions that you put in place for your conditional use permit. 
If you don't put those conditions in place now, it's too late. Because at that point, I'm talking about a, a ministerial action. I'm not talking about the issuance of the conditional use permit itself. And that's why it's so important to get this right now, up front. And you're right, Highway Z is under the jurisdiction of MoDOT. But that doesn't relieve the county from meeting the concerns of a that, that are raised by traffic and looking at this site and saying, well, are we going to have problems with left-hand turns here? How many cars are really going to be generated by this facility? We don't know. I read the minutes of the PNZ meeting pretty carefully. And it didn't tell me, you know, how many people are going to be coming in, a, in any given hour. It wasn't even definite in, as to when games are going to happen or not happen. There were kind of two answers given. We're not going to have games. Well, later on, there was an answer, well, we are going to have games. Some games, not sure how many games. Well, again, that's something that you address now with the conditional use permit. And you do that because you want to figure out, you want to get it right. I mean, if you're going to put this facility in, Councilman Brazel, I agree. We want it to succeed. Mr. And Cronin, you had a comment? Yes. Uh, quite most of the time in the past when I was an alderman, I didn't agree with Mr. Mr. Br Mr. Grass on very much stuff. But in this one, I, I do have uh, some agreement with him. Uh, this is a conditional use permit. And if you follow the law, they have to, the burden of proof is with the soccer folks to show why this won't hurt the, the, the neighborhood. I don't see how they've done that. I don't see anything about any type of screening to screen those residents. I don't see anything about parking lot dust that's going to be kicked up for 300 cars on a lot on a park a dust a gravel parking lot. I don't see a traffic study to make sure that those 300 cars that are going onto a private driveway on the Z is being addressed. Obviously, they haven't talked to the neighbors, and I think you know being you know, keeping the neighborhood harmonious with all the people that are using the neighborhood is important. Um, I don't see anything about the sanitation. Is is, is a porta potty is adequate for a crowd of 300 people? So I, I mean, I'm uh, I live right down the road in St. Paul from lit soccer fields, okay, and they haven't been a problem, okay. But the same token, if that was coming new to my area, I would want these questions answered, and I don't think that the developers are answering the questions. There's also a lot of other places in this county that might be more suitable, like along 370 where there's existing soccer fields and industrial parks. So I understand the residents' concerns with this, and I would be concerned if this was moving in my neighborhood as well. And, I, and, and as a former soccer player and a parent of soccer players, um, I think the people at the soccer park need to talk to the neighbors a little bit more. Maybe there's something that can be worked out, and if, there, if it can, if, the way it is right now, to me, they have not established. Um, a, they're not. They've not established that this isn't a threat to public health, safety. That's not going to in, injure other property owners. That's not going to hurt the aesthetics of, and scenic values of the area. That it won't impair property values. I mean, all the stuff that they're supposed to be doing for a conditional use permit. I don't see it getting done. So that's. That's my comments, at least. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah, Mike. Yeah. Um, my district, uh, how the, so the slice of fields on Highway Seven or Three Seventy are, are right there, and then um, Mueller Park, the City Parks Department, operates. I think about twelve or fourteen fields there as well. One of the things that that has me concerned about this, the, and I'll speak first about the the slice of fields. Um, it's a gravel lot, a gravel um, road that comes out of there, and. Saturdays and Sundays, um, uh, there's a lot of times a lot of dust getting kicked up, not just a, a little enough that uh, you can definitely notice it from Highway 370. And if my, if my house was right across the street from that, with that amount of traffic on it, I would be very concerned. Um, what I don't know is, and I've, I've heard some conflicting uh, information, is this just practice fields or are we gonna, are, is the idea that there's gonna be tournaments there? And actually, before you answer, I don't know that it really matters because unless it's written into the con the, uh, the conditional use permit, it it can change. So we, we have to be careful about when we approve it. Once the fields are there, the changes the use of them can change as as time goes on. Um, so I'm I'm very concerned about that. I'm concerned about the uh, 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 sanitation needs of just having porta potties out there. Um, again, those. I was a soccer coach for uh, quite a few years. I absolutely loved it. I thought it was one of the it's one of the best sports out there that uh, um, a lot of people of different abilities can can get out and enjoy the game and play it. Um, it gets our kids 
off of the couches. All of that is absolutely critical and it's wonderful. I, I, I salute you guys and the, and the amount of time that you put into uh, uh, to promoting the sport itself. Um, I think that part is, is, is admirable. But I, do, I am concerned about how it's gonna impact the neighbors. I'm gonna take a little exception with Mr. Mr. Goss like I normally do when, when he's before us. Um, it doesn't have anything to do to me personally about the value of the homes around there. It doesn't really matter to me if it's half million dollar homes or $200,000 homes. It still impacts the people the same way. So um, if you wanna sway my vote, stay away from that particular argument because it doesn't really matter. It's, whether, it's how it affects the residents that are, that are immediately adjacent. Um, and in that in that same particular neighborhood. So, guys in the soccer, um, I would suggest that you come up with a plan that that addresses the dust and the uh, and the sanitation needs. Um, I've seen these things grow. Um, the The amount of people that are that are that participate, the amount of, of grandparents and and friends that come and watch, um, is it's it's great. It's wonderful. It's a family event. All those things are positives. Uh, but we need to make sure that we look at the uh, public infrastructure to support it. And so far, I don't think that, that uh, we have a plan that I can support from, from that standpoint. So that's, uh, that's all I got. Thank you. Kerry? Yes, I'd like to uh, see if Mr. Wojcik can come up and answer a couple questions here. Not that we don't appreciate Mr. Goss. <coughs> just, just a couple questions. Obviously, all of the things that he, he's brought up or things that you've already uh, obviously been aware of and mm -hmm. been brought up at planning and zoning and also just just a couple of questions once obviously this is a large investment sure you and your group are putting a huge amount of money into this because I realize what it cost number one to buy the land two uh, artificial soccer fields very expensive um, the the question I have is you know Twofold, is there, are there going to be a concession stand? Do you have plans for that? Uh, right now, uh, there's no plans for that right now. Right now, it's strictly just uh, soccer fields, two artificial turf fields, parking lots, and that's, that's really all we have money for. You know, that's part of the reason why, you know, I agree with the gravel parking lot as, at Slisa as being a problem, but at Slisa, or, which is St. Louis Soccer Park, or St. Louis Youth Soccer Association off 370, they've actually got a, it's almost a, a quarter mile road of gravel. That's what creates all that dust. People get up to 40, 50 mile an hour on this gravel road that's, uh, you know, just, you know, offshoots under the highway. This is just a simple parking lot. You know, I think we all know the, the cost of putting in a, a, an asphalt parking lot is quite expan extensive, you know. Not saying we want to do it. We do want to do that, but, uh, you know, the, the, the turf fields alone are $1.2 million just for two turf fields. So that money is going into the property, you know, it's costing a, a, a big sum of money as well. So, you know, we want to do these things, and I appreciate all the, the residents around there. We want to, you know, we want to be a part of the community. Um, obviously, we're willing to, you know, talk about and negotiate and, and work. I think uh, at the last meeting we uh, amended it to put a berm in, a berm going all the way down um, our front of our property. We're okay with that. Putting a berm in with some uh, some trees and pine trees, whatever it may be, we're okay with that. So to provide, you know, um, so they can't see the facility. Per se, so we want to work with the community. It's it's not about that, but we want to you know as long as it's reasonable, reasonable things. Um, the, the 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 parking lot, the gravel parking lot is a big. I think there's some spray you can put down on gravel as well to sort of you know combat the dust as well. There's different kinds of gravel you can buy. We can look into that. Uh, the sanitation system, um, the sewer. We'd love to put a sewer in. It's seven tenths of a mile down the road, going north on Z. So it's just not there yet. Now when Highway Z goes to four lane highway, which is happening in the next five years, I assume that they'll do that. They'll bring uh, the sewer system down. And we can tap into it from there. Um, the only other option is just. Um, um, sanitation fields, you know, so um, um, uh, something else I wanted to add to that as well, that the property's been for sale for 10 years. I mean, it's a long time this property has sat there. I mean, it could have been anything. It could have been, you know, a, um, um, a subdivision, you know, it could have been a trailer park, you know. I think we're providing something. Our time of usage is nothing all day. Nothing. It'll be dead empty till about 5 o'clock. And we're okay with maybe taking the time down to 9 o'clock as well with the lights. I mean, we're willing to work uh, with, 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 with the residents as well. The Moscow lights illuminate just the field. They can be turned off with a, um, with a cell phone. You know, if, if, if a practice ends early or it's thunder coming out and the lights are still on, you know, boom, they can pop off with a cell phone. So these things can be accommodated, you know, to help the residents of the community as well. Um, question. About yeah. the, the questions about erosion runoff, mm -hmm. those are things that... Uh, 
have you looked into those and, and talked to the people that would obviously be doing the grading and yes. those kind of things? Burns and Jones is doing the grading for the um, for the soccer fields. They've uh, done I think they've done the grading for every soccer field in the area, probably about 25 of them. And we've already spoken with him of where the runoff, where the drains are going in the fields, where it's where it's where it's going. I mean, quite frankly, the runoff right now it's not going to be any worse than what's already there. It's a farm. It's agricultural. The waters, you know, we're building grass fields, you know what I mean? And we're flattening it out a little bit, but for example, the turf fields, uh, there's, there's gonna be drains at the back of the turf fields that are gonna go away from the road. Um, there's a retention pond in the back of the, the property as well. Um, so that's Burns and Jones, I've left that up to them as far as putting the, the, uh, the drains and the, everything in there, so. And, and, and you have uh, thought of and investigated the possibilities of, of Constructing restrooms uh, rather than the porta potties. Yes, I mean as soon as that, um, and I've even called St. Uh, St. Charles County to find out how much it would cost to bring the sewer down. It's quite expensive, um, and since they're doing a four-lane highway anyways, it's going to be brought down. But um, yeah, I mean we're 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 not opposed. I mean, slice again, St. Louis Youth Soccer Association off 370. All they've got is porta potties. I think they've got maybe a couple bathrooms, but the rest is porta potties for. I think they got 15 or 16 fields, you know, um, and those are sitting out in the open. Granted, there's no residents there, but we're willing to, you know, hide these these porta potties. It's, it's a temporary fix to this, you know, to this problem. You know, it's not a permanent fix by no means. I mean, this is, you know, eventually this is just, you know, how much money we have to spend right now, you know, and we want to, uh, you know, invest in the facilities to get it up to where we need it, and then we can start investing in the infrastructure. So, okay, question. Just one last question. Sure. Um, have you considered the? Uh, the trade-off of, uh, uh, you know, maybe eliminating for X number of years the lights and using that money to maybe solve some of these other problems. Yeah, it, the only problem with that is that uh, these kids and parents can get their kids there at 5 o'clock. In October, it gets dark at 6, 6.30, so we can't practice, you know. So, um, you know, it's just it's one of those things where the daylight savings time is just it kills us in the in the fall. So we actually need those to practice, you know, until nine o'clock at night. Um, so that's that's the toughest part about that. Well, I got a quote. Anybody else? I, I, um, what what kind of hours are you talking about? It's just talk. You said weekends or all through the week or what? What, what are the hours? It's it's going to be uh, weeknights, uh, five to nine. Um, I know that people had a problem with ten. We're okay with doing nine. Um, five to nine uh, weekends. Uh, there'll probably be some games out there, um, but the, the the majority that it will never be that crowded unless there's a major event. A major event, maybe a tournament. You know, we don't have any tournament scheduled right now. You know, it may not be a tournament scheduled for the first year. Um, and a major event for a tournament might be the parking lot may be full and every field may be used, that kind so of thing. So are we talking about a Saturday or a Sunday or possibly a weekend or something yes, like that? Yes, yes. Saturday and Sunday games and weekends, uh, maybe, or weekends in the future, maybe a tournament. How far, what is your setbacks from the fields uh, to the property, to any uh, residential houses, about 300 feet or something, 350? Uh, I think the nearest home, I mean, the, the fields are actually, I think, was it you? There's not a picture of the fields anywhere? No? Okay. The fields are set about 400 feet back from the highway. There's going to be a 120 foot easement um, when the four lane highway goes in. Uh, but the fields are roughly the first field is about 400 feet back. Um, and like, like I show with the, the lumens right here, it's 197 feet. The lights bleed, so that takes us in the middle of the parking lot. Um, they've actually said the Moscow lights, the shaded lights are actually. Um, a, a normal street light puts off more light pollution than a Moscow light with a shade. We all remember the days when, uh, you know, the football game was going on and the football game illuminated half the city. Well, these lights are totally different. They've got shades on them and they come straight down on the fields. So that's how they get away with 197 feet of bleed from the lights. There's no PA system. We're not going to ever have a PA system out there. Uh, the only noise that's going to be polluted is uh, probably a whistle. Yeah, uh, Dave. I guess I, I don't really have a problem with the uh, porta potties as a, to start your adventure there. I, I guess I do kind of have a problem with the gravel parking lot, but I think, um, you know, you could look at some other alternatives other than just asphalt. Um, I, I could see the drive coming in, that being paved, and some other methods for your driveway or your parking lot that don't generate dust. You know, maybe a chip and seal or something that that's a lot less expensive sure. than putting in a big parking lot. Mm -hmm. So I, th I think before I could support it, I would want to see something there 
for the parking. The rest of it, I think, is great. Um, and uh, I wish you the best of luck. Thank you. And we're open to you know any thoughts or ideas. I mean, um, like I said, there's a lot of things going on here, a lot of moving parts. We're trying to do you know one thing at a time. And you know the the, the parking lot was not you know, the top priority, but um, we can definitely look at uh, doing some low dust uh, gravel of some sort, or maybe some kind of spray on the on the on the uh, on the gravel to make it you know less dusty. Well, is there a problem to, to asphalt the drive coming into the parking lot? No, that's going to be asphalted. There's oh, so that is a, asphalted. Yeah, there's a, there's a okay. Sprock Road's already asphalted, um, oh, right. and that's coming off of um, Highway Z. That's where the there's actually an electric plant back there. Um, that's, no, you know, that's why yeah, no one would build oh. there anyways. But the, we've actually got the Central Electric to give us an easement for their property to use their asphalt drive into um, basically at the side of our property, so that we're not creating traffic on Highway Z. That's asphalted, and then our drive that comes into the property will be asphalted as well. And then when you actually get the parking spaces, that's where we're planning on graveling. Okay. Yeah. A lot of the stuff that you're mentioning. It's either not part of the conditions or it's not part of any plan that, that I'm seeing, okay? For instance, if we're going to do this, okay, with a conditional use permit, and he's saying no PA, then that should be part of the, the conditional use because people don't want to hear the soccer games announced over PA. The lights you're referring to, nothing that we've received that I saw at least was about the lights. It looks like there's quite a bit of room between the parking area and the road, okay? Uh, you mentioned something about berms and landscaping, okay? I'd feel a whole lot better if those houses over there had berms and landscapings to look at instead of soccer fields. Not, I don't mind watching kids soccer, but maybe those folks don't. But what I, I guess what I'm saying, and, and then Dave's uh, a, a non-dust part of the condition could be a parking lot that doesn't generate rust. As far as um, the joke in St. Paul, where I'm from, is we have more ball fields than we have residents. We, we have a bunch of them. We don't generally have porta potties out there, but we do have drain fields. And you have when you have that, at least you don't have have the vandalism issues of people flipping over porta potties and making a stinky mess and I mean a septic cost a bit of money but it's not that horrible so I mean I think there's some uh, possibilities that, that maybe you can make this thing more tolerable to your neighbors but I think it needs to be on the plans if I was a neighbor to this and I saw what was presented to us you know I would be hiring attorneys as well okay but I think possibly putting more detail in your plans about stuff that you can do to make this more palatable to your neighbors and actually going to talk to people like the folks, the fellow that's building the new house and the lady there with the black jacket might be prudent too. I have spoken to him actually quite a bit. Yep. So, okay. Um, yeah, he's actually probably may buy part of the property as well. So, it has a okay. buffer zone. So I've been I've been open to talking to uh, the residents. He's going to buy possibly five to ten acres adjoining the property, so he has a buffer zone. And I've been open to that. I even offered to finance it for him. So I mean, I have been open to talking to the residents uh, that are willing to talk. Put it that way. Is it, did you say the buffer, the berm, is that in, in the back or is that in the front? That's in the front. That's along Highway Z. It was an amended at uh, the last meeting we had. They put an amendment in there to put a berm in there, which we're fine with. And then the parking lot's set back because they're gonna, there's an easement of 120 feet from the center of Highway Z to build a four-lane highway that's coming in the next five years. That's why the parking lot was set back with a berm. I, yeah, Mike. Can we borrow your map for a little bit? Put that, slide that up there. Sure, absolutely. Because there's a lot of that's along here, that's along there, and uh, yeah. And, and one of the things that I was going to say is that you, you mentioned setbacks. What your ordinance provides is a 50 foot setback and a 100 foot setback. So your ordinance right now doesn't provide the setbacks that um, you're talking about 400 feet and 300 feet and that kind of thing. It's not what you provide in your ordinance. It's you're going to pass if if it's not changed. And that's you're, part saying, of, you're saying that it should be part of the conditional use? Is that what you're absolutely. Saying? Well, I, mean, I think that's what Mr. Crone is talking about. I, I, I think that it seems to me that, um, uh, that I do think that there may be a happy medium here if the soccer field is put together in a good fashion that, that makes, you know, if, if, we, if, if, there's, if we take a challenge with the residents and say, you know what, if you want us to, some of us may take a hard, hard position and, and say, no, I'm not going to be in favor of it. And some folks may say, well, I am in favor of it. Then you're not going to get anything. You're, you may get a vote three to four, whatever. Who knows? But if you try to come to an agreement and say, I I'd like to have a berm. I'd like to have it established that the lights can't be shining on. It's got to be a, a condition of the conditional use that it, it can't go onto their property. It's got to be so far back. We got to have the setbacks established. We got to have this. We got to have that. It's like just trying to figure out what's going to make everybody happy. Otherwise, we'll just run, run with his plan. He may get enough votes or he may not. 
You see what well, I'm saying? So I, just try to come yeah, up with something. I understand that. And I, I think that what we've been saying is there are a lot of details here that really need to be sweated out. Um, and uh, with, a, with a site plan that is truly detailed, that we truly know what's going to be put in, that you have a schedule in terms of what's really going to happen with these games, no games, tournaments, no tournaments, that kind of stuff needs to be known. And right now that's not part of your ordinance. And so those are all part of those details. The traffic concern and, and the turning. I mean, last time I heard, MoDOT was broke. Uh, so I don't know how they're going to be expanding Highway Z. Uh, and, and, but, you know, it's, I get some lots on Highway Z. But, I, you know, I just, I think that's the idea that we're depending on MoDOT to widen Highway Z to solve our traffic problem, I think is interesting. So uh, I think there's some issues like that that got to be addressed. Well, but I also think to some points that you got on your proposal, like, depreciation of property. I mean, I don't want to, I don't, if that's true, then show me the facts, but I don't believe that. The uh, water runoff issue, I don't believe that. It's already a grass field, so how is a grass going to make more grass? If you build houses, it would be a Because you're going to have a, issue. you're going to have two synthetic fields, and we've seen no details. And then he's putting in a water it, detention basin, too, which is We have seen there. no details in that, and, and so we don't know that, and we, and the time to address that issue now at council I would agree now. with that. I agree with it, with that. I'm just saying that some of these are just throwing stuff on the wall. I mean, well, you part know. of it is your standards. So to the extent to the extent that you I laid out in our presentation what mm -hmm. your ordinance calls for this applicant to address. Mm -hmm. So, you know, don't shoot the messenger that that's what your your ordinance has has set out. Uh, it is fun. So, so <laughs> those are things that, um, you know, we look at this, and when we look at the overall use, I think one of the patterns that comes through is that this type of use tends not to be put in this kind of area. And you can look at that in St. Charles County. And I think you mentioned a couple soccer parks. You're real familiar with them. Every one of them are located in different kinds of areas than this area. And so that makes but this Brad, that much more important. But Brad, it's going to either be an agriculture or a floodplain. I mean, that's just where these things go. But I'm not saying I'm in favor or against it. All I'm saying is we got to try to work through it, or else just we can just oppose it, and then these guys might support it. I don't know where it's going to go. Let me say something. I think John has something. Yeah, John. We've been working on this for over half an hour, and if it's if it's this you know contentious, maybe we should have a work session on it, or we should table it until they can come up with concise plan for us. I mean, we're trying to work through all these things and we're not going to get it done. Just oh, I agree with that. I just think some of the council members wanted to voice their opinion and we can move on. Um, let's, let's, let's move on for a little bit, but if you guys want to add something different. I have one question. We've had this same contentious thing before, and I tell you, I part of the reason, and Mr. Goss will know about this, most municipalities in this county, Mr. Ma Mr. Goss, correct me if I'm wrong, but when they, when they come before a board for a conditional use permit, typically there's a site plan in hand too, correct? You would generally see more details yes. on the site. And we don't do that at the county level, and I had a hard time with that for the last five years, because if I want to give this, these folks a conditional use, I want to see those berms, I want to see that screen, I want to see where that location of those parking lines is. I want to see all that. We're not seeing that. We're asking to give the permit first, and then let staff work with them later on on the site plan. And I think that's not the best way to do it. And I've, I've voiced that concern before, to, uh, to, to Wayne and, and folks because I know how it's done in municipal level, you know, level as a former alderman and I think, I think it would help your, you, sir, and as a developer, to show everybody what you know, precisely you're doing. And as of right now, we've not seen a site plan. Okay. Uh, hold on, sir. Okay. Uh, did someone, yes, Dean. Three quick questions, Mr. Chairman. Uh, are you gonna have tournaments? Yes, we'll probably have to turn them somewhere down the line, yeah. People come in from out of town? Correct. Where are they going to stay? They'll stay in hotels around the area. Around the area? Um, and you know, are there enough hotels in that area? Or how far are they going to have to go to find There's hotels? There's a brand new one in Wentzville. There's one in uh, Wing Haven at Double D. There's one uh, there in Lake St. Louis. I mean, there's, there's several. It's a great bed and breakfast in Augusta, I hear. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a lot of places down there, too. It's good for business. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and then um, the lights. Uh, I think that's great what you said. The lights now shine down on the field. Mm -hmm. But are the poles the same height? I mean, my kids were never good enough to play under the lights in soccer. Um, 
<laughs> they're what half they, the size. Or, or are they the same height as like a football pole? Or they're about they, half the size. They're about half as yeah. high as, as football? Yeah. Okay. And then I guess the other, uh, the other thing that's just puzzling is, you know, 43% of St. Charles County is floodplain. And generally there's nothing next to you except uh, a cornfield or something. Um, a lot of that's 500-year floodplain. I mean, why, 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 why this area? I guess is what I don't understand. Can't build turf fields in a flood. You can't build turf field in a flood. Floodplain. You'd have to build it above 100-year flood. Yeah. flood. You so can't. You have to what, raise it. Well, if it floods, which is, we looked at several properties off Wilmer and uh, South Point Prairie, but they're all floodplains. You cannot put turf fields, and it costs about uh, eighty thousand okay. dollars. No, that to that, roll that up. makes sense. I didn't think of that. Okay. Thank you, Mr. One, Mayor. One thing. That's sir. the answer to your alternate use. It's not floodplains. So you could use it residentially. <clears throat> um, just one comment. It sounds to me like Mr. Goss, you know, you, there's, you, you almost, you, you really don't oppose this project as long as these different things are met. And I think we're all in agreement that some of these things probably do need to be done. Okay. And my suggestion is that you sit down with the you know, the two sides sit down together and see if the, when they bring this before us the next time, if, if those things are being addressed. And uh, let me say something real fast. Planning and zoning did not want final plans. They wanted, you know, this pre stuff, and that's sort of what Mr. Colonel was saying. They just wanted, um, they did not want final site plans. They wanted just the pre stuff, and that's what we gave them. So um, now the berm was mentioned at the meeting, you know, the last meeting, we agreed to put it in, uh, stuff like that. But um, we did exactly what planning and zoning wanted. Uh, for St. Charles County. In all honesty, if it was a seven to zero vote, we wouldn't be having this discussion. Okay, sure. it was four to three, so that's why we want more details. Sure. I think also, though, that um, I, I, from his perspective, I can see why you wouldn't want to spend a whole bunch of money and just have a flat no. I get that, but it's like he said, it's it's kind of it could go either way. So I, I would ask you um, to. Um, can you get, get some more details and, and maybe have an engineer draw a plan up or a plot plan and show where your berms are going to be and show how the lights actually maybe bring in some photos of what the lights look like and what your uh, just we're, what we're what we will do is make these part of the conditions um, and then we'll see if without I think we're close enough to say that your project's not dead but we got to try to come to an agreement. That's how I see it. I don't know. Um, I mean, Joe, I think you're absolutely correct. I'd like to see this work. If there's a way we can address the, the, the concerns that the neighbors have brought up. Um, I mean, you know, I, I will point out that you've already had submitted to you petitions from surrounding property owners that will, re that will meet the standards for a remonstrance. So there are serious concerns uh, with this proposal. Uh, and um, we do need to address those because at this point the applicant is not addressing what needs to be addressed. So uh, whether he's able to do that, I can't say. But at this point, one of the concerns, and that's somebody getting killed out there, is a legitimate concern. You got 300 cars with, you know, kids and moms and tired people at, you know, 9 o'clock at night taking a left-hand turn on Highway Z. I want to make sure that turns safe. And I know you do too. And we haven't seen any details on that. I think and that's what we're asking though. I think we'll ask them for a little more details. And um, um, I, you, can call, uh, you can call me or you can call, you, can, you guys can talk or whatever. But I guess the thing is, Brad, though, is your group gonna, is he gonna go through all this song and dance and then it's gonna be a flat out no, no matter what. So at that point, there's no point of him even trying to you know, he can just submit to the county and see what happens, you know, so it's got to be, are we going to try to make it work? Yeah, I guess that's the thing that, you know, we might want to try to do. Well, that was, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, didn't, I just <coughs> wanted to make uh, one more statement that as far as the grading of this site and the improvements, that's all going to go through our, the county staff and they will review any additional runoff, put in the requirements for sediment control and and uh, that's fine. I, I mentioned that, you know, something you could look at was possibly putting in asphalt drive aisles or chip and seal drive aisles and make the spots uh, gravel so you don't generate the dust because I, I would have a problem with that if I lived near there. And, and I understood the berm was already a condition on this, but uh, it would be, I think, 
to your advantage to provide us some additional plans and so forth. As far as the road, I mean, we don't build roads to nowhere. When, when things progress uh, in an area, you make improvements to the road. You don't spend the money before that. Uh, as far as I know, people cut through here to get to Lake Sherwood and other parts of the county, even New Mali. So the, the traffic's there already. So that's all I got to say. Okay, are we moving on now? Any yeah, other comments? Mr. Chairman, a, a quick point uh, with respect to remonstrances. Those are available for rezonings. They're, they're not part of the procedure for conditional use permits. I believe the bill before you is a conditional use permit bill only. All right, thank you, Harold. Okay. All right, moving on. Uh, thank you guys for coming in. Thank we'll you. talk about it. Uh, feel free to call me or anybody that lives out there, you guys can call me and uh, we'll talk about what what action plan we should take or if there's any, any happy medium. Okay, that, can, that moving on to the next bill, uh, 4237. That 38. was 4237. Uh, We're gonna go to 4238, requested by Joanne Lycom, sponsored by council as a whole. An ordinance enacting Chapter 203, Ordinances of St. Charles County, Missouri, OSCCMO, relating to communications equipment placement on county facilities. Any questions or comments on Bill 4238? I have a question for the, Joanne, is this you or who is this? Is this me? Whose bill, whose bill is this? Oh, this is the communications. Um, so we built the 12 towers for the radio system. And we told you at the time that there would be excess space on those that we could use to support the overall costs. And this is setting up a procedure so that we can go out and be able to um, rent that space commercially um, and be able to put that income towards the total cost of operating the long-term system. Is we'll there eliminate the need for a tower on private property. Is there, is there federal money involved with this? There, there was federal money involved in the overall cost of the project. So the county, the county controls the tower and, and the power and all that to it, right? County control. Yeah, uh, our, our equipment is on these towers. So what's up there right now are the microwave dishes that shoot the um, kind of the super highway of the radio system around and then the antennas that bring them down to the radios that are in use on the fire trucks and the ambulances and on the officers. And anyone who'd be locating our uh, equipment on the towers, any private user would be responsible for putting in their own utilities and paying their own utilities. The, the private user will be res responsible for bringing in their own, own right. electric Correct. and everything. So it will have anything to do with the county's electric or power or anything. So Correct. we don't pay any of their costs. They have to pay 100% of them. So it can't be shut down by any government entity or anything like that. It'll just, they're just hanging it on the tower. Correct? Correct. Yeah. Have you, has, have there been interest? Have you been yes. contacted? Considerable. So. This is pretty standard stuff with a lot of radio towers. Right. Like radio stations that I've worked for over the years um, and some television towers, they pay for their towers based upon these rental agreements. Uh, when I worked for ABC 30 downtown on the KDNL tower there at Tucker and Cole, uh, they make Sinclair makes a lot of money just renting out space on their towers. So if you want to, I mean, they have uh, Secret Service on theirs. They have FBI on theirs. Now, granted, they're downtown, <laughs> two two blocks away from the dome. I don't think we're going to get Secret Service money, but um, it, there is there is an opportunity to definitely get a revenue source to come back in. The commercial carriers are interested, and and as Harold just stuck his head around and reminded me, just so you're aware, it's not only the 12 towers. It's also the antennas that are on our buildings or the possibility of placing equipment on our buildings where we have the right kind of feeds. So, um, yeah. Any other, is that good? Any other comments? Okay, moving on to Bill 4239. Bill number 4239, requested by Tim Lomar, sponsored by Council as a Whole, an ordinance authorizing the prosecuting attorney to execute agreements with other governmental agencies, including the Missouri Office of Prosecution Services, MOPS, to assist with automated case management and criminal history reporting systems approved by the Prosecutor's Coordinators Training Council. Any questions or comments on Bill 4239? 
Seeing none, move to 4240. Bill number 4240 requested by Hope Woodson, sponsored by Joe Brazel, an ordinance authorizing the county executive or his designee to execute an amendment to the memorandum of understanding between St. Charles County and the Missouri Department of Corrections for vaccination and testing of the department's employees, volunteers, and interns. Any questions or comments on 4240? Seeing none, go to 4241. Bill number 4241, requested by Hope Woodson, sponsored by Joe Brazel, an ordinance amending section 230.030.A, C, and H, ordinances of St. Charles County, Missouri, a section of the Food Code of St. Charles County, Missouri, OSCCMO, relating to late fees and prorated fees for permits and amending section 233.980.A of the Aquatic Code relating to late fees for permits. Any questions or comments on Bill 4241? Mr. Chairman, um, Councilman Klinghammer had asked us to please extend the, the lay period for the food code, but when we went to go look at it, we realized that we had the same provision throughout, and so while he didn't actually ask for the aquatic code, we made them all parallel provisions. Okay. What exactly are the changes here, Joanne? So right now in the, in the food code, you all enacted a few months ago um, a grace period of 14 days. And um, I, I believe because of some constituent conversations, um, the councilman pointed out that, that a 30-day period would be much more appropriate. So we're adding that same grace period um, to the aquatics code. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Moving on to 4241. That was 42, or 4242, I'm Bill sorry. number 4242, requested by Hope Woodson, sponsored by Council as a whole, an ordinance enacting Section 230, Ordinances of St. Charles County, Missouri, OSCCMO, relating to lodging establishments. Any questions or comments on Bill 4242? David? Yes. Um, Suburbs so reviewing the, uh, the state requirements that for the lodging. I, I couldn't help but notice that a lot of the requirements for that had to do with fire and building code <laughs> issues. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's important if, if we have people out doing those types of inspections that they are certified in those disciplines. And, and I had mentioned that uh, I could see the building inspections division working with you all to assist you since they have people already certified. One of the things in the state of Missouri, the state health department has always taken the lead on lodging inspections, and those counties that are responsible, they also teach the LPHAs how to do those inspections. All of our inspectors have had more than 10 years of um, lodging inspection um, certifications, and they were just re recertified last month. So they're fully um, you know, trained to do something like this. I would be interested to get some information on that. Sure. That certification program. I can absolutely, I can provide you with that. Thank you. Any other questions? Any other questions? All right, thanks, Hope. Okay, moving on to 4243. Bill number 4243, requested by Hope Woodson, Karen Grimm, sponsored by Joe Brazel, an ordinance one authorizing the county executive to execute an amendment to contract number ERS 04515057 with the Missouri Department of Health and Senior Services for Women, Infants, and Children, WIC, Local Agency Nutrition Services Program, two, authorizing the county executive to execute an agreement with the Missouri Department of Economic Development Division of Workforce Development for temporary assistance for needy families, PY 2015, and the division's related subaward of $200,123.68 an acknowledgment of the Missouri Department of Economic Development Division of Workforce Development's subaward 42-14-14-15 related to a grant for receipt of up to $200,123.68 for temporary assistance to needy families, TANF, and three, amending the 2015 budget adopted by Ordinance 14-109 by authorizing a supplemental appropriation for the Department of Workforce Development accepting such grant in the amount of $200,123.68. Any questions or comments on 4243? Seeing on moving to 4244. Bill number 4244 requested by Dave Todd, sponsored by Jill Brassel, an ordinance amending the 2015 budget adopted by Ordinance 14-109 to add one additional detective pay grade 12 within the St. Charles County Police Department Drug Enforcement Fund 
and authorizing an amended fund balance in the Drug Enforcement Fund in the amount of $33,700. Any questions or comments on 4244? Okay, seeing none, moving on to 4245. Bill number 4245, requested by David Todd, Scott Lewis, Steve Elman, sponsored by Joe Brazel. An ordinance amending Ordinance 15-062, which authorized execution of an amended contract for the establishment of a multi-jurisdictional drug task force to be known as the St. Charles County Regional Drug Task Force by authorizing execution of an addendum to that contract in order to add the City of Cottaville as a party. Any questions or comments on 4245? Scott? Sure. Um, is everything in here in order? Yes, sir. Yeah, actually, this is an apology to the council. Somehow, with like nine different eyes on it, nobody noticed Cottleville wasn't in there. So when it went out, Cottleville noticed. So <laughs> I bet you heard about that one, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Any qu comments, Michael? Nothing? No, it's just nice to have the Dave Todd uh, Hope Woodson meeting here. I think all the bills are from you two guys pretty much since then. So. Okay, that's it. That concludes uh, bills for introduction. Are there any table bills to be uh, removed from the table? That's a quick question on that. I, I know that it's been five months that we've been trying to work out a franchise agreement with Amron. Are they being uh, difficult or what, um, what's going I on? I would say they're being difficult. They are being slow. I spoke to Amarin's attorney about a week ago after he sent me some drafting. I pointed out to him some concerns that his drafting presented to us. He said we will continue to talk. Uh, I have, uh, however, not uh, heard from him uh, except by voicemails. We are trading don't, voicemails. Don't they point. have the same issue with the other counties and where they operate? So um, why, are well, we, why are, we, are we recreating the wheel here? Or, or? No, I think some of the problems is that they are seeking to uh, incorporate provisions of statutes that don't apply to this county because this county is a charter county. Okay. Uh, so we have, uh, we're looking into getting the, that language out and getting into the agreement language that is appropriate for this county legally. And most importantly, uh, language acknowledging that we have to issue special use permits under Chapter 229 RSMO okay. uh, for the highway department's uh, control of our right of way and the facilities. Well, Carol's in being very nice. They, yeah. they sent us an agreement, <laughs> we formatted it, they brought in a new lawyer. He got sent to negotiate rates, now he's done, and he didn't realize that what he was working with was his own people's stuff and he tried to change it. Harold, tell him how many times I've asked you whether you want me to pick up the phone and call Warner Baxter, the CEO for Amron, who used to play basketball at Rittner High School, and I've known him ever <laughs> since, uh, to get on this guy. But you're too nice. You want to you keep giving him chances, and, and I think, think we're about to the end. Any other miscellaneous comments? Would you tell them that there's one council member that's been taking notice of all the PSC increases that Amron's been getting, <laughs> and they would like to see them chip in some money for roadway or for, for right-of-way maintenance in St. Charles County, all those right-of-ways that we mow for those folks uh -huh. for free all the time. A Amron's no. been very good to work with our highway department, and that I think a lot of the tolerance has really been that they clearly had a change in personnel inside. But they, they've long been very good to work with, so. Okay. Um, one more comment, uh, Michael. Um, let me have, uh, Steve or Harold, did you guys want to make any comments about the phone call on Friday you gave me, or do you, want, do you need to wait, or the final? Let's don't jinx anything. Huh? Let's don't jinx anything. <laughs> so are you, are you, you know, do you, is that talk, do you why talk? Don't you, why don't you announce it to the audience? That well, that's close. Uh, Harold, go ahead, Harold. Well, what I can say is, is a matter of public knowledge. As, uh, I think Mr. Brassel is asking about the, um, the case concerning Nyer versus Warren County and other parties, um, an ac a fatal accident on Augusta Parkway or a section of Augusta Bottom Road in Warren County. And I believe the parties are very close to resolving that issue. In fact, the plaintiff's attorney announced to the court in Warren County 
early last week that the case is close to settlement. All the jurisdictions that are seeking to cooperate in fixing, a, in fixing Augusta Parkway are on board. I am told by the attorney for the Kessler parties that they have no objection to that agreement. And we now know that the Nair plaintiffs are, don't have any problem with the agreement that affects the public. That there are still discussions between them and Warren County's insurer. Those are the issues that are open. But I think there is cause to be optimistic at this point. Well, the good news is, is I mean, it took us years to do this, and Stephen Harold did a good job working on this. And, and we could not, Steve and I could not really even have a press release on Augusta Bottom Road because it was never really official. Everyone did some handshakes and things like that and, and a paper call, but I'm like, we don't have a signed contract. But apparently last week everything's been signed off, so it's official now. Well, well the, yeah. the, the jurisdictions have all signed. Yes. The, I am anticipating that the Kessler parties, the various Kessler parties will uh, I expect that the Nyers will too, but after their discussions with Warren County's uh, insurer. Okay, well, thank you. That was a lot of, a lot of time and effort you put into that. Any, yes, Mike. Two quick comments. One, I think, uh, congratulations. I think you're the first minister who prayed and stayed for the entire meeting. Yeah. So <laughs> you've, you've put in your penance, even though that's not yours, but you get credit for that anyway. That well, yes. Yes. You, did a good job. you did a good job. And secondly, uh, I've got to work with Scott uh, Drocknick for a number of years over at the EDC. And uh, as you guys know, I've been really trying to push this shop local St. Charles County uh, idea and, and really encourage people to think about where they're shopping. And that wouldn't have got off the ground if Scott hadn't orchestrated that whole meeting, got all the municipalities together, got all the chambers together at the EDC, and he has put all that together and he's put a lot of time and effort into really doing the, the grunt work for making that happen. So publicly, I wanna thank you very much for everything that you've done with that, and I wish Greg Prestonman the very best in replacing you. That's gonna be hard. And I'm done. All right, motion? Motion to adjourn. Second. All right, we are adjourned.